Kirby's Return of Dreamland Deluxe. Easy my favorite Kirby game, and also one of my favorite childhood games growing up on the Wii. When I heard the game was getting an HD remaster initially, I knew I had to get it at some point, and of course, it's as great as ever. But this video is not a review video. Today, I decided I'd rank all the copy abilities in Return of Dreamland Deluxe, including the two brand new ones for this specific edition, which are Sand and Mecha, and I'm going to order them into tiers, from F all the way to S. I'll be showcasing my opinions and thoughts on each of the copy abilities based not only on how good I think they are, but also how enjoyable they are to use. Keep in mind I'll only be focusing on the ability in Return of Dreamland specifically, the deluxe version, meaning I won't take into account changes and differences from other Kirby titles. Oh, and one other note, although I have attributed a number ranking to each ability, they are mostly loosely ranked within each tier. Anyways, with all that being said, I'm TNT Nitro, and let's get right into it, starting with F tier. And to nobody's surprise, the worst ability on my tier list, coming in at number 26, is Sleep. Yeah, there's not much to say about Sleep, it's, you literally just take a nap. It's iconic as it shows up in a lot of Kirby games, but, you know, you're not using it to take down any bosses. Well, I stand corrected. Starting out detail with Crash. This is a classic screen wipe, but unfortunately it's the worst one out of the three available in this game. Moving on to 24. Festival. Yeah, this is pretty much the same as Crash, but you do a dance, so I guess it's cooler. For a third and final screen wipe attack, we have Mike. It's the best one because you can do it three times and I mean, look at that mohawk. Next up on our list is our first actual attack, which is Rock. Although you're invincible when using it, you can't move so it's not insanely useful. There is an upcut move too, but it's not too great. If you don't want to take damage and play it safe, this ability is alright, but I just can't rank it much higher than this. Parasol's up next. It's a classic ability, but I've never found it that great. You can flow and stuff, which is cool, but I just prefer many other abilities. Needle comes in at our 20th spot, and I don't really like it. The only reason I do like it is they have that little wheel ability. Because they took out wheel and they kind of added it to needle, but other than that, it's not good. You can't really move when you're doing your attacks, and there's many other better abilities. Have you ever wanted to be a ninja? Well, here's your chance. Sort of. Man, I wish ninja was better. It's probably one of the coolest abilities, but it's honestly not that strong. Personally, I, I can't put it much higher than this. We're starting off C tier with High Jump. It's overall an okay ability. It's kind of fun to use, but it only has a few specific uses. Overall, not bad. Leaf is up next, and it's just alright. It's not bad, there's a few decent attacks like the Leaf Storm and such, but honestly, there's a much better ability that kind of makes Leaf obsolete, but I'll touch on that later. Spear is honestly really fun, but there's a lot of limitations. For example, most of its attacks only hit in four directions, which is kind of annoying in a game where enemies can attack you from any angle. I will say though, the spear copter attack is probably one of the coolest attacks in the whole game. Honestly though, the best part of spear is the introduction of Bandana Waddle Dee, who's one of my favorite Kirby characters. Should have been added to Smash Sakurai. Spark is actually one of the strongest abilities in the game, but in order to fully charge the shot, you either have to shake your remote or spam the buttons, which is just kind of annoying. If it wasn't for that, this would probably be a top 5 ability, but unfortunately I don't want to put it much higher for that reason. Whip is honestly pretty cool. Not only does Kirby get to wear that sick cowboy hat, he gets to grab and throw his enemies like nothing. But honestly, the best move has got to be the whip copter. Look at Kirby go. Starting off beam tier. Oh, I mean B tier. We got beam. Beam is also a pretty classic ability. It appears in most Kirby games. It's nothing crazy, but honestly, it's got enough in Star Arsenal to earn its spot here in B tier. You got attacks like the infinite beam attack in the air. You got the dash attack. You got the charge shot. It's overall pretty decent. This next ability is the bomb. Literally. Bomb is pretty fun. It's also kind of strong. You can easily spam bombs, so it's really good against bosses, and yeah. If the last copy ability was the bomb, this copy ability is fire. What? Nah, but in all seriousness, fire is one of those Kirby staples. Originally appearing as burning and fire, but now we have the best of both worlds with modern day fire. Although fire is pretty cool, it's not one of my personal favorites, but I can definitely see why it would be someone else's. Tornado is pretty sick, honestly. When you're using its primary attack, you're completely invincible, so you don't have to worry about taking damage. The only slight downside I could find here is that sometimes the tornado is a bit hard to control, so it might feel a bit random where you end up. Up next, we got Water, which is a pretty slick ability. 
For Kirby's running animation, he surfs on the floor, which is super cool. And he can also soup over water. Soup over water? <laughs> Anyways, water is a super good ability overall. My favorite attack, though, has got to be when Kirby jumps in the air and starts spitting down his enemies, dousing them all in water. It's pretty sick. And finally, to close out B tier, we got Hammer. Hammer is honestly a pretty good ability. It's very strong. Just to me personally, I don't think it quite has enough to be in the A and S tier. Okay, I know I've used the term classic quite a few times in this video, but this next ability may be the most classic ability. I'm talking, of course, about Sword. It's always one of the first abilities you get in every game, including Return to Dreamland, and it's always one of the best. Sword's got it all, with fast strikes, upwards and downwards attacks, charge attacks, and even a projectile attack. Definitely one of my go-tos in Return to Dreamland. Alright, so when I search up the word cool, apparently this is what comes up, but I think I'd rather choose the ice ability to represent that. Yeah, ice is cool, and I'm not just talking temperature. You get these super cool spin attacks in the air, you can freeze enemies with your breath, then once they're frozen, you can kick their ice cubes as an extra projectile. And on top of all that, you get to ice skate as your running animation. Just a super cool ability, one of the best in Return of Dreamland and also in the series. Finally, we got our first of the two new abilities in Return of Dreamland Deluxe, and wow, they were not messing around with this one. You've got a very good arsenal all around when it comes to mecha, but nothing compares to that charge shot. Not only does it look epic, but it can completely wipe out everything and anything in front of you. It's a super cool ability, and it's an awesome addition to this game. At first, I wasn't so sure if I wanted to put Wing as high as I did, but I think its position is justified. Wing is not the easiest to use at first, but once you've mastered it, it is the funnest and best ability for mobility and speed. You can easily zip through levels with the Wing Dash, as well as a faster float speed. It may not seem to be the best in terms of raw attack power, but there are certain strategies which can be used to breeze through bosses, such as using condor dives and abusing invincibility frames. Overall, it's one of my favorite builds to use, and it's no surprise it's the favorite of speedrunners. Coming in as our runner-up, we got Fighter. Fighter is simply put, just a super fun ability. It's not only super fast, but its attacks are really strong and often lead to combo chains. I especially like using the uppercut attack and then comboing it with the downwards kick attack. Also, Kirby can literally do shoryukens, so that's pretty awesome. It was my favorite ability in the original Wii game, but in my opinion, there is one that stands above the rest. So that's why it's coming in at number two. Just like with the F tier, I've only made space for one ability on the S tier. Have you guessed what it is yet? Here it goes. That's right, the newest ability is also the best. Sand is taking my number one spot. I didn't expect Sand to be that great at first when I was watching the trailers, but wow, was I so wrong. It is so versatile, combining moves from several different copy abilities, and its combo and damage potential is easily the best in the game. It has many other attacks such as the Sand Hammer or the Sand Castle, all of which are fast and powerful. Sand is easily the go-to for me when it comes to boss fights, and is, in my opinion, the best ability in the game. Well, that wraps up the video. Even if you don't 100% agree with this tier list, I hope you enjoyed it, and let me know down below some of the changes you'd make. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Kirby and Nintendo-related content, and thank you for watching. I'm TNT Nitro, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao.